Well, there's a, a message on the screen saying you're live. I've just clicked the start live stream button. I'm shuffling things around on my screen. So all things being equal, uh, I am live. I'm, I'm streaming live now to the masses. I can see that Andrew's dropped in and said hi. Hi, Andrew Roche. Hi, Envoma. Hi, Motcam. Good evening, all. Tell us what, do me a favour in that chat panel, whether you've already said hello or whether you're sort of lingering there on the edges, let me know whereabouts you're joining from in the world and what brought you to, to not the internet, I know the internet brought you here, but what, what brought you to today's um, live stream? What, you know, where did you see it? Were you on previous ones? Did you see it pop up on my YouTube channel, on Twitter? Let me know where you're from in the world and what's brought you here this evening, how you found out about tonight's live stream. That would be a good start. Looking forward to seeing where you're all from in that chat panel. What comes in England, you saw it on YouTube. Thank you, that's useful to know where, where you found that. It's good to know. Let's see where anybody else has joined us from. I wonder where Andrew's. I know Andrew's been on the last few, so possibly it was just uh, he just remembered that it was going to be happening this week. Yeah, you you've been on the last. I think at least the last week, haven't you, Andrew? You've been you've been a fair regular in recent weeks. Thank you for supporting the channel. So, crikey, what is this? What is this? This is the fourth live stream. Let me spend 60 to 90 seconds really quickly. I promise you it'll be very quickly going back over the preceding live streams that we've done um, on the channel. So the first week we spoke about getting out with your map and just getting out there in your local area, wandering around local neighborhood, local town, village, city, whatever, with a map, not going anywhere that you're not familiar with, going around familiar routes, maybe they're routes where you go and do the shopping or walk the dog, take the kids to school, but using a map this time and relating the map to the ground and the ground to the map. That was the first week that we did one of these. Second week, we went back to the map again and I gave you some map care tips, ways that you can look after your map, but primarily ways that you can pimp your map or hack your map whilst um, enabling it to remain in one piece, things that you can do to your map to make it even more useful than it already is. That was week two. Last week we got started with a compass and I gave you some little uh, some hints and tips for using that as well as some, some areas that we don't always talk about when it comes to using a compass but are important to consider. Those are the last three weeks. This week is all about this box of tricks here, my navigation kit. I said that we were gonna take a look at this, we were gonna talk through this box of tricks here and talk about some of the things that I carry with me all the time, some things that I might carry with me now and then, and some things that don't leave the house but they're used for planning back at home. So this week we're gonna take a look at my navigation kit and I'm gonna talk through it. Some of it will be very familiar to you, some of it may be mildly familiar i can almost guarantee there'll be something in there that you've not seen or heard about one particular item springs to mind that you've not seen or thought about before that i find very useful as well so that's setting up today's session let's have a little look in the chat see where people are from and film is joining from finland ah yes i do remember you joining before thank you yeah and biscuits nine millimeter First time on any live stream anywhere from South Wales, Cardiff. That's two of you. Two of you from South Wales. The, the, the word is getting around. That, well, that's very... Thank you for the uh, thank you for the feedback there, Biscuits. I appreciate it. Jim. <laughs> Jim, every week, every week you're the catalyst. So, yes, J Jim's, Jim's, Jim likes to keep tabs on my alcohol intake. Or perhaps he just likes to see what I'm drinking each week. I've just talked through what I spoke about for the first three weeks. Let's talk about what I drank for the first three weeks. Week one, I think we started off with something like a, um, a, a, bud, um, a bud or a desperado, something quite weak. The following week, I think I went to the, the bud or the desperado. It, it upped slightly in potency. Last week, we drew back the curtain on Old Rosie's side, a 6.2% or something like that. And there's a, there's a former colleague of mine that was watching this back. 
Hello, Shed, if you're watching, uh, was laughing to himself because it, it, uh, it devastates it devastates him when he drinks it. This week, I'm, I'm pulling out all the stops. I'm on Henry Weston's Vintage Cider at 8.2%. In the unlikelihood of me making any sense in about 45 to 60 minutes time, we, 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 can, we can tick that off as a success, Jim, that we've managed to get through that. If I get through that and I'm still making sense, I'm drinking meths next week. Let's just take it up to the next notch. So that's what I'm being joined with. That's what I'm, uh, that's what I'm drinking. Don't worry about it, Dave, from Nairobi. No problems at all. Um, a few seconds ago, Dave, I said there's something in my box of tricks here that nobody's going to spot or recognise. I think you might be the exception. You might be the exception, something that's in here that might seem familiar to you. So without, uh, <laughs> in fact, Jim, there's no, no point leaving it in the bottle, is there? It's not going to wear... Uh, that's not going to bring any comical effect to tonight's session if I leave it in the bottom. So whatever you're drinking, lads and lasses, let me know in the chat if you are having a little a little swifty tonight. Cheers. Good health. And good health in particular to yourself as well, Jim. I know um, you know a, it's a rough time at the moment, so good health to yourself. Yeah, no pressure, Dave. It's all on you when we come to this point. Right. This is no particular order. It really is. I've not kind of thought, let's go with the obvious stuff and then the not so obvious stuff. I'm going to reach in the box and um, pull something out. Lucky dip. I hope it's all clean. Yep. Yeah, and uh, we'll go from there. So to begin with, because it's in front of me, part of my navigation kit is my compass. I harped on about this last week. If you've not yet seen that live stream video, it is available on demand. Why not go and check it out? It's a silver type 4 slash 54. 4 slash 54 compass it is primarily uh, measured in mils and we spoke all about that last week it's also got degrees on there as a secondary increment which i kind of forgot about last week i mean it's there it's in front of me it's really hard to see you, you, you'd be going some to be able to use the degrees accurately on this because they're, they're on the inside of the bevel not the outside but they are there what i do want to show you with this is that whenever i carry a compass I have that compass on a length of cordage, doesn't matter what it is, thin, thin as you, I mean, we're not talking about tow rope here or paracord, it doesn't need to be like that. Something thin, something strong, this is climbing prussic cord, I attach a little non-climbing carabiner at the end, and I know then wherever I place this, whether it's in a jacket pocket, a shirt pocket, whether it's in my trouser pocket, which is where it tends to live now, I attach it to me with that, and if for any reason I drop it, I don't quite put it into the pocket securely it's windy whatever that compass is not leaving my person it's attached to me so um just a, a little hint there there is an attachment for it at the bottom it's designed to be attached there it is so if you're carrying a compass if it's not attached to your body maybe something to have a think about it's fairly obvious when you think about the, the reasons for doing so so we've talked about the compass let's talk about the map Again, spoke in some detail on week one and week two about the types of map and scale that I prefer to use. Next week's live stream, I'm going to talk specifically about map scales because there is some confusion about them insofar that they're completely the opposite of what you'd imagine in terms of the detail they provide. I don't want to steal my own thunder. Next week, we're going to be talking about map scales and map checks. As well so we're going to come back to maps specifically next week but i carry a map with me you may be able to see it's it the focus is quite good this week that there are some parts of that map that have been highlighted in pink and some in yellow the yellow doesn't stand out as well but they are there and if you go back to week the the second live stream that i did i talk about why i've marked the map up in that way and then the final obvious thing is a map case This is an Ortlieb map case. I love Ortlieb products for what they do. This is a second one that I've owned. The first one I owned, I bought in the early 90s and I got rid of it a year or two ago. So you, you do the math, but it, it lasted a while. The only reason I got rid of it wasn't because it got it ripped or tore or leaked or anything like that. It became so faded by UV light that I couldn't see the map. I thought I'd cataract. It was so 
misted and, 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 and degraded that I just couldn't see the mat, but it was still absolutely waterproof. I prefer Oatlieb bags because they're a rubbery kind of texture. There are many mat cases out there that are they're almost plastic. They have a plastic film on them. And I found that when you open and close them repeatedly over time, like any plastic does, it starts to go brittle, it starts to fray, it starts to crack. All of a sudden your map case has got a hole in it. it it's not a map case anymore, it's a sieve. So that's why I prefer these, that the rubber, rubberized plastic is malleable. Unless it gets pierced or burnt or, or, or something quite harsh on there, it's not going to crack through being opened and closed. You may have noticed as well that there is also a length of cordage attached to my map case and same detail that gets attached to my body. I'm going to mention it now just in case he's on the live stream. I'm going to hold my hand up and say some years ago I was doing an international, the Carrymore International Mountain Marathon um, with a mate of mine, Hoppy, up in the, is it Kielder Forest? I think it was Kielder Forest. And um, I had my map in a map case and I, the good boy, tucked into my shorts, the band of my shorts. We got to a checkpoint. Long story short, um, I lost my map. Oh, the embarrassment of saying it out loud. So... Um, yeah, you've got to carry a map, keep it attached to your body for the same reasons I'm advising keeping a compass attached to your body. I'm going to pause, I'm going to have a sip of beer, I'm going to check what's going on over in the chat. Andrew's on the carling again. Is that not like a step down from dishwater? Yeah, I, I noticed that, Joe, I saw you mention that, so um, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm sure everybody that's on this and watching the recording afterwards will, will wish you all the very best for the next few weeks and months. Um, I've, I have strong hopes. I have strong hopes. You've, you've, you've handled it well um, up with a plum. OK, so as I'm going through this, we've sort of touched on the obvious stuff. Do you use a map case? What sort of map case do you use? Do you keep your key navigation stuff attached to your body as well through some form of cordage? Let me know in the chat panel there. <laughs> Andrew, the irony here is I was mocking your alcoholic intake and you replied Tez rather than yes. So maybe it is stronger than, than, what I, than what I've mocked. Something else that's fairly obvious is a notepad and pen slash pencil. There is no getting away from that the more you get involved in map reading and navigation and the more you want to kind of push the boundaries with your comfort zone, the more maths is going to creep into the equation. Now, I hate maths. I did not leave school at 16 to join the army because I was a gifted academic. OK, I hate maths. I struggle with it, but it's inescapable. If you're going to push your navigation, you're going to come up against maths. It's not tricky maths. It's, you know, we're not talking algebra and other stuff. It's relatively simple stuff, but it's stuff that's got to be spot on. It's got to be accurate. Otherwise, you may as well not bother doing it. I find personally, because I'm not great at maths, writing stuff down and seeing it in front of me, seeing the numbers in front of me unfold, giving me the answers um, is better than trying to do it up here. I think most people trying to do it up here, if they're cold, wet, hungry, tired, possibly injured, possibly some pressure, it's getting dark, they've got somebody in their party that's struggling, most people would probably want that, that sense check of writing it down and, and seeing the numbers in front of them. Jim's saying that um, Dave laminates and fablons his maps. Yeah, I, I used to in the old day, Dave, when I could get newspaper, uh, wallpaper rolls of fablon for nothing, but uh, I've tried buying it recently and <laughs> bloody hell, it's expensive. So yes, I'm a fan of fabloning as well, but um, alas, I don't, I'm not, I don't have access to it anymore. Jim saying he keeps his main map in his bag, local area printed on A4 in my pocket. Uh, Jim doesn't like rain. Does that mean you don't go out in rain then, Jim? Therefore, you don't need to worry about um, about your map getting wet because it ain't raining. You're not good. If it ain't raining, Jim ain't training or vice versa. Anthony, oh, Anthony's popped up. I'm glad you could join us, Anthony. I can't believe you put a client meeting ahead of us last week, but we'll forgive you and thanks for joining us again. Anthony doesn't use a map case. He prefers a large Ziploc bag. Yeah, OK. So, so uh, there's an, you know, it's an equivalent. I guess it's a, more, it's a cheaper, more accessible equivalent, isn't it? That way, if you need a Ziploc, you've got one. If something happens, replacing a 25 cent Ziploc won't hurt me and I'm too cheap to buy proper stuff. Yes, you are too cheap. 
But uh, but the, the point you raise about Ziploc bags, yeah, that they're good bits of kit. The only drama I've ever seen with them is the um, is the zipper on them failing or, or getting stuck closed or getting stuck open. And I say that because I use Ziploc bags for other reasons. But other than that, you could probably carry two or three of them, oh yeah, because they fall down to nothing. So I, I like I like the thought. I like the alternative way of thinking. <laughs> yes, Dave. Yeah, indeed, free from G4. And Verma's saying they've got a phone GPS map compass with me. Use that in least to most. The map case I've been using has been Office Supply Plastic. So I'm assuming Office Supply Plastic, you possibly mean um, some sort of fablon or laminate or something like that. Let's move on. Stuff I leave at home. Highlighter pens. For those of you thinking, why does he carry highlighter pens and why is he leaving them at home? They're the highlighter pens that I use for highlighting the Eastings and Northings or reference systems. You, you know, the maps you use make use something else on my map there. So they don't come out with me. There's no need for them to come out with me because I prep my maps at home, but they form part of my map prepping kit for being at home. Let's have another one. Another couple of compasses here. I'm not going to go through those. One's a folding compass. One's a th one's the, the one that looks like it's never been used is calibrated in degrees. We spoke about that last week. I think why. Carrying on, carrying on, carrying on. Okay, so let's let's just go paper based because I talked about laminates so on before. There is a root card. It's a fairly complex root card. There's a lot of detail on that root card. If I were going for a bimble around the local woods, if I'm honest, I wouldn't fill one of these in. I'd let someone know where I was going, but I wouldn't fill one of those in because I'm not really following a route. I'm just wandering around an area as such. If I was going up into the hills, if I was going up into the mountains, if I was going somewhere where actually I could get lost, or if I were to not get lost but become injured, there's, a, there's an additional factor of concern on that, then I would most definitely fill in a root card. It's fablond, it's laminated, so I can reuse it over and over again. I'd fill in a couple of versions of this. I'd fill in a, a copy and carry it with me, because again, working out angles and bearings and measurements and timings on the hill, while it's not impossible by any stretch, you're still on the hills. There's all those other pressures. Doing it at home, you've got the comfort of, of, of being at home, you've got the, the lack of pressure of being at home. Admittedly, you might have alcoholic consumption whilst you're at home. Cheers. Looks like treacle. But um, not to the same degree of pressures that you've got on the hill. So filling in a root card, carrying a copy with me, leaving a copy with somebody else. People often say, leave a copy with the youth hostel owner. Leave a copy with the car park attendant or things like that. I leave a copy with somebody that I think gives a crap about me if I go missing. Let's be honest. The, the, the youth hostel owner, the pub owner, the car park owner, something like that has got other things on their plate. They don't know you from Adam. Leaving this with a wife or a loved one or, or a very, very close friend, if they've not heard from you by 6pm, they'll do something. The car park warden's not ahead of you by 6 p.m. Is it? You know, it really, it's not a big deal to him, man. I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking those sorts of people, but um, leave it with someone who actually cares if you make it back or not. So, root card there. Who else fills a root card and interested to know? Anthony's still banging on about radians. Second week on the trot. <laughs> Who else fills a root card in? I'm not talking about wandering around your local area, out for a bimble, that sort of thing. I'm talking about, you know, when, when, the, the, when the dial is turned up in terms of severity and consequences, who else honestly fills a root card in, takes a copy, leaves a copy with somebody responsible? Don't leave it with me. Let me know in the chat panel there. That's a fairly complex root card. There's a lot of information on it. It's not just your route. You can put on details about the party that you're with, phone numbers, kit that's being carried, medical conditions, so on and so forth. So there's actually two pieces of kit in here that I think very few people will know what they are. So here's one piece. Is there anybody on the call that recognises what that is? Not what's written on it. I'll come on to what's written on it. Is there anybody on the call that recognises 
what that is and what it's used for or what this piece would have been used for there's one particular person on the call I think might know whilst I'm letting you have a think about that Jim's saying there's no root card he doesn't do long range stuff all right Jim yeah fa fair enough I mean like I said if it's local you've been around local area go on then Dave what's what am I holding up in the air here what's this piece of what is it I won't give the game away what is it and what is it used for Biscuits 9mm saying is it a sleigh um, part of a chopping board? It's neither. Dave Payne knows what it is because I know what Dave Payne does for a living or did for a living. So I know that Dave's going to know what this is. I'm going to let him answer before I steal card. <laughs> Dave's right. They're plastic inserts from ammunition tins. When you get boxes of ammunition, these things are packed in them to separate the ammo out to stop it clinking together and um, to give an, a, an area where air can circulate around them for packing purposes so they're just the pieces of plastic there's nothing sexy about them or, or or walter mitty about them they're just pieces of plastic but they're like bloody bomb proof sorts of stuff they're very very good for writing on you'll notice here there's actually some details there that i've written on about a Navex that I was taking some friends out on and what I was going to do, what I was going to cover at each of the checkpoints that we went to. The great thing about these is that you can hold a torch behind them or a dim light behind them and you can actually kind of see through them. I don't know whether you possibly can through the webcam, but you can actually almost see through these if there's a light behind them. They're great for writing stuff on. If I don't need a full root card, let me turn that around. You may just be able to see, very, very faded, it's rubbed off over time, some columns and some headers there. Grid from, grid to, description, bearing, distance and time. It is the ultimate simple route card. And when I get to the end of that day, I can wipe it off and write tomorrow's nav on it. This contains the real detail. This contains escape routes and so on and so forth. This contains the bare bones that I need to be able to move on, assuming that nothing else is going wrong. So you're quite right, David. It is a plastic inset from an ammo box. Well spotted. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We've got someone from the US now wading in on ammunition. Let's see what Anthony's got to say. What the Hades? In the US, we just get cardboard when I get a case of ammo. No, same with British military, um, not all ammunition, depending on the, the size of it, but, but small arms ammunition is very definitely packed into uh, small brown cardboard boxes. Those boxes are packed into tins, and the boxes within those tins are kind of packed in between those plastic layers. Larger calibre ammunition doesn't get put into cardboard boxes as such. They are indeed free and cheaper. They used to be free and cheaper. This is the last surviving one. I had bagfuls of these and they've gone over the years. So last one I've got there. F family heirloom. Yes, use wax pencils. I've got um, Lumicolor, Lumicolor pens on there. But yeah, wax crayons, China graph pens, all of that will sort of work on there. Let's have a dive into the box. Okay, another piece of kit here that's... that's it's not um, it's not um, peculiar to the military. This particular piece is peculiar to the military, but the concept of them, they're, they're available all over the place. That's very kind, Dave. Thank you. Please make sure that there's nothing rattling about in it, though. Don't want the old special branch knocking on the door again. So this is a protractor, a Royal Artillery. You might just be able to make out protractor RA. Royal Artillery Protractor. You can do pretty much everything that that does by using a pencil, a ruler, your compass at home on your map. This is used for, for being able to plot, measure, take bearings and also grid references. But, but I use it primarily for bearings. Um, it's a great piece of kit. It's incredibly accurate. I use this when I'm at home. I don't take this out on the hill with me. I use this at home when I'm planning routes because the degree of accuracy that it can bring, in my opinion, is greater than a pen, pencil 
and using a compass. So this is a planning tool, not necessarily an out on the hills tool. You'll notice that one part of it has been obscured with some, God knows how old that tape is on there. It's gotta be 25 years or so, that tape on there easily, uh, because that was showing the same here. You notice that the Roma here for one in 25,000, one in 50,000, one in 63,316. This over here was, I believe, in yards and military maps and civilian maps in this country uh, just don't get measured in yards anymore. But you could imagine if that wasn't uncovered, let's turn it round. You can imagine if that wasn't uncovered, it'd be very, very easy to use the wrong Roma if you're under pressure or stress. So I've taped it off there to reduce the chance of me cocking it up. Speaking of cocking things up. Ah. Let's get that down the neck. I'm going to pause. I'm going to come up for air. I'm going to pass a little bit of wind. Um, <laughs> what are we thinking in the chat panel? Is there anything? In, in fact, let me take a step back. What in this kit so far have you never considered? Just never crossed your mind. It's never, it's never been a concept. It's never been a concern for you. You've never thought about it. There's one thing in this kit so far that you've just thought, I would, I would never do it, I would never use it, or I'd never thought about that. Maybe not that you would never use it, you just never thought about it. Let me know in the chat panel. Dave's saying um, he uses a protractor in work for bearings, as obviously I'd have issues with a compass. Do you want to explain, Dave? I know why, but do you want to explain why you might have issues with a compass in the line of work? that you do. Don't go into any more detail than you feel comfortable with, but if you want to explain the uh, the reasons why you might have an issue with a compass, that might be um, of use to people thinking, why would he use a protractor over a compass? What's, his, what's the issue with a compass? And to anybody else, what in this kit so far have you never, has never crossed your mind for good or bad reason? Oh, this is going down well. For anybody that didn't join at the beginning, this is 8.2%. So at any point where I stop making sense, maybe about 20 minutes ago, then let me know. So Dave's weighed in there. The reason he would have a problem with the compass is he is almost, I imagine, permanently mounted in a vehicle. Vehicles tend to be made of metal, have big metal engine blocks and have weapon systems attached to them in Dave's role for them. Um, magnetic compasses like we discussed last week don't necessarily play nicely with so using a protractor although it's analog it's um it, it has a greater degree of, of, of accuracy and reliability you can't use a compass Anthony or you can't use a pair of compasses ah. Jim's saying um, he's never considered a root card. Having OCD, he plans over and over at home before going. Root is in my head. Is it in anybody else's head, Jim? I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here. I'm playing, I've been a mountain leader as well as an, as, as an ex-squaddy. Um, I would always err towards having a, a documented root card. But you, you, you walk your own routes. That's, that's what I would say. Oh, you're buying a boat compass. I think it says, but being, I, see, I mean, that means but buying a boat compass to mount on my wagon, presumably to get over the, the uh, magnetic or the metallic impacts that it would have on your magnetic compass, I assume. Let's have another little dive back into here. Okay, so th there's another example of a root card here. I don't want to go, I don't want to labour. There's another example of a root card, two of them. Actually, this is double-sided. On the back side, there is a, a you know, a, a, an attractive sort of in-your-face piece of information here, and it lets people know what to do in the event that you overrun. This one doesn't. This one you'd kind of need the, the person that's that, that's holding this to be fairly competent in the actions on you overrunning. This one 
nice bullet pointed first thing call the first three numbers of the people in this party detailed inside the card the numbers are on there if you do not get an answer from any of these three numbers you need to call the emergency services now so there's almost an idiot's guide of the things to step through um, so same same outcome as this but more prescriptive so we're going through the old box of tricks here let's have a see what's happening in the chat panel looks like jim's missus always knows where he is <laughs> that's not quite what you said jim but I'm translating it that Jim's missus always knows where he is, so he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to fret. That's fair enough. Okay, I'm, I'm going to before I, before I hold this up. Again, if you are pushing your, Jason, can I put a link where to get those? Um, I'll try, Dave. Yeah, you know what? I just I googled root card templates. I, there was no particular website that I went to. It wasn't a known place. I just, there's three versions. There's a version there. There's a version there. And there's also a slightly different, yeah, there's a different version that I've never actually committed to using there. So um, yeah, I would put a link in, but I mean, I've had these years. I don't, I don't quite know where I got them from, but just Googled um, downloadable root card templates or root card navigation root card templates pdf and it brought me up all sorts and i scrolled through and picked out those that were the best away up jim's missus is, is x forces as well so she's always going to find him she wasn't an officer though was she jim because then you've got then then you could get away with it if she was a, an ex rupert no i do believe i can post links anthony i, I don't i'm not saying that i can't post links it's just that i've had these so long I don't recall where I got them from. I can't just lay my hands on where I got them from. Um, but as I said, if you Google navigation root card templates PDF or something like that, you'll come up with a whole range. Make sure that you click on, if you're using Google, don't just click on all, but click on images as well and you'll be able to see them easily, what you're looking for. No worries at all, Dave, no worries. Um, so, if you're going to push your navigation, if you're going to take it beyond just wandering around the local woods and go up a leg, then you're going to have to wrap your head around, whether you like it or not, that there is that the understanding of how distance, speed and time correlate with one another. There's a, there's a triangle, distance, speed, time, correlate with one another and that it's, it's important to understand the relationship and, and be able to do some calculations that if you know any two of those distance or speed you can figure out the time if you know the time and the speed you can figure out the distance it's an incredibly important relationship from a navigation perspective it involves maths and we've already talked about my skill set with math so one of the things that i've i've bought i, I did used to make these and actually this is quite a nice um, a, a nice version of this but this is an actual pad plastic laminated speed card it's from a business called shavenraspberry.com now i'll be honest if you'd said to me shavenraspberry.com i'd have had certain things in my head as to what that website might be about i'd have been disappointed because it's a navigation website it's a really good navigation website it's by a um, run by a guy called lyle brotherton who is a real guru with navigation. He teaches mountain rescue teams. He teaches element of, uh, of British forces. He's a very, very good guy. Uh, he's got his own website selling stuff. The, the rear side of it there also includes some corrections as well. Uh, Naismith and Trant's Trant Trant corrections, if I remember correctly. There's a mouthful are on the back there. I carry that with me in my notepad, that I've already mentioned. It eliminates me miscalculating a distance of speed or a time from that, that important relationship there and just lets me know that if I need to cover this amount of ground and I'm walking on average at this space, this pace, this is how long it's going to take me. That's in its bare bones, that's the whole distance speed time relationship triangle and how important it is. Oh, Jim's used a swear word, so it's saying this message is held for review. 
I did not see in what area she is shit hot on maps, etc. I don't mind you. I don't mind you having a little, a cheeky little swear there, Jane. So I'm clicking show, but it's not showing. Oh, now it is. There we go. Oh, isn't it good? If anybody uses a, a dirty word, a swear word, then it holds it. <laughs> uh, Dave got to the quip before I did. The mo I missed that you said an officer in the RAF. So straight away, RAF's not technically the military, although I like the way that they send their officers to war. I, I'm, I'm all behind that. So um, Dave, Dave beat me to it, Jim. You beat me to it. Let's keep diving into the box of tricks here. A couple more things, two or three more things to show you. Some of you may gasp at this, but we've talked about the fact that I do own a bloody old brick-like GPS, Garmin GPS 12. Oh man, I've had this since. I had one version in the late 90s, and then I had another version in the early noughties. I can't remember the last time this was switched on, but I can remember the last time I took it out with me, which would be the, the last time I went up on the South Downs. So I carry this as a backup. I am confident enough in the areas that I go into that my map reading, my analogue, my map reading and compass skills are sufficient and my skills surrounding them 95% of the time. I'm not perfect. Anybody that says that they never get lost is a liar. This helps on those occasions when I aren't certain, when I've gone through all of my relocating exercises, when I've gone through all of that and I'm still not certain. That can help. Doesn't help to pinpoint it completely down. They're not, you know, they're not the panacea to all ills, but it helps. It's another factor that I can draw in to help pinpoint things down. So I do carry one. I rarely use them. Um, if I was going out on big hills, I would, I would always take one with me, no doubt. So um, I know a few weeks ago I spoke about I don't use apps and I don't like these mapping software and things, but I never said they were a bad idea. I just said I personally don't use them. However, they're, they're a part of the toolkit. They're growing in popularity. I don't believe that they should override your ability to use these. But I do believe that carrying them along with those and the knowledge to use them um, is not something to, 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 to mock, is not something to, uh, to decry. What else have we got? Okay, I've got two things left. I'm going to go for the, the unusual thing that I think only one person on the call might get. And then I'm going to go for uh, one or two things that are fairly obvious, but maybe not for the reasons you might imagine. This here. If I take this out. Dave, hit the buzzer when you think you know what it is. It's a piece of metal. A very rusted piece of metal, I must admit. I keep glancing at the chat to see when Dave's going to pop up. It unfolds. So that just folds in on itself. Fairly flush, fairly small. It unfolds. I'm just going to rotate that around. Ooh. Is there a clue there? If I hold it at that angle, does that give a game away? What about if I do this? <laughs> Dave's been on the same course I've been on. Did you nick one of these though, Dave, at the same time? Um, there we go. Those prongs of metal come apart and lock out. So what I've now got is this. I'm looking at different angles. Does anybody want to weigh in, other than Dave, because Dave's used one or had one used on him? That sounds a bit painful. Anybody want to weigh in as to guess what this is? what it's used for from a navigation perspective. I don't believe it is actually primary purpose. I actually think it's got another purpose, but it's it's bloody good at its at its um at what it's become known to be used for in navigation circles. Let's have a look. I'll keep it held up there. Envelma's saying is GPS from 2008 has been superior to all smartphones in fog, partial coverage and on a hill. 
there is very definitely um, a, a factor to take into account that a sat nav is kind of built, or a GPS is built for, for primarily one purpose. Phone is not, in fact, a phone's not even built to be a phone anymore, is it? A phone serves multiple purposes. So I think there's something about using a best of breed tool um, if you can. So that makes a lot of sense there, Nambama. So here's what we've got. Envoma, distance measuring thingy for like artillery. You're, 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 all, you're kind of in the ballpark in one area, but not in the other. I like your thinking. Dave's saying he'll swap us one for a box of plastic inserts. But one of these, Dave, I've, I've only got one of these. If I had more than one, you, you, I'd have probably got rid of it by now, but you, you could have had it. Biscuits 9mm, stereoscopic something or other. In a, it, in a way, you're kind of right. In a way, it's not the stereoscopic scopes that we'd use for interpreting air photographs or air mapping or anything like that. But you, you're kind of in the right ballpark, in a way. Biscuits sight of some type. Ah, you've obviously been looking at the, uh, the rear aperture and the, the sight blade at the front. Again, not, not wrong. I mean, it's not a sight. But equally, it kind of is. And Vilma, seen, you've seen these things on boats. Biscuits 9mm parallax correction. Again, you've used the word parallax there and you're in the right ballpark. So amongst you all, you've still all got it wrong. But amongst you all, you've landed in the right ballpark. Well done. This is what it's used, this is what it's used for from a navigation perspective. Imagine you are out on the ground teaching somebody and you say, OK, see this spot on the map here? I want you to show me over there on the ground where it is. It could be kilometres and kilometres away. Nobody ever asks you to show them a church or, or a pretty great big crossroads. It's always something really awkward and small. Instead of just going, oh, yeah, it's over there. I'm pointing at it. You know, where's that finger going? The individual would hold this up. They would look the right way around. Good God, how much of that have I drunk? They would look through it. They would line up the rear aperture and the foresight blade on the object. And then the person stood behind them, the person that's given them the challenge, would stand on their shoulder and look through the other one. And these are designed to converge on the same point. So if I was pointing in completely the wrong direction or subtly in the wrong direction, but kind of in the right area, the person behind me would know. If I was pointing spot on, the person behind me would know. So from a navigation perspective, these are really good from either showing somebody where something is on the ground that they've related to on the map, or you can do it the other way. You could point to a student, you could point a student to something on the ground and then say now show me where it is on the map so it's a great way so everything that people said about being a site about parallax correction kind of because you're, you're viewing things in different planes you were all right you just weren't quite spot on but i didn't expect you to be i remember these being called a tit a target indicator thingy pretty sure that wasn't the correct terminology but I'm fairly certain these were not used for navigation initially. Originally, these are actually used for, you know, for bringing fire onto things and indicating targets and so on to other people. But um, yeah, very, very old piece of kit, but absolutely does, does, does the job of what I've just described when you're teaching navigation or assessing navigation very, very well indeed. Incredibly simple stuff. I'm really surprised. I, I, I don't, I've never seen these in circulation on a civilian market for people who teach map reading skills out on the ground and maybe there is maybe i've never bothered looking because because i've got my tit in my hand let's have a look what's going on in the chat it is clever jim it, it, i mean it's it's disturbingly simple when you think about it but yes it's it's usage and the fact that something so simple can be used to where with such a clever perspective is is, is, is intriguing Oh, hey, up. Lewis is saying he's had a terrible introduction to cuss, 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 oh my Christ. Tell you what, I'll have a drink, that'll help. Terrible introduction to compass work by a Boy Scout leader when I was 12. I don't know where this story's going, let's read on. I'm worried. 
He had trouble using compass and map navigation. A few of us gave up and used dead reckoning to get back. Wow, well, I mean, there's, a, there's an entirely different field, dead reckoning. Um, dead reckoning for anybody that's not in the know. First of all, dead reckoning was not a technique that was primarily taught a great deal in the army. I went on my map reading instructors course. If you did well on that, if you, I think it was a B or above or something like that, you got recommended to go on the unit navigators course, which was the next step up. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to go on that. I, I must have cheated in an exam. I got fortunate enough to go on that. And they taught dead reckoning on that. And dead reckoning is this notion of if you take a map away from somebody um, or don't have a map, if you know that you are traveling on that bearing at that speed for that amount of time, and then you change bearing and you go at this speed on that bearing for this amount of time. Basically, if you, if you are tracking all of this and recording all of this, what you should then be able to do is, if you know your start point, you should then at the end be able to tell where you are on the map, even though you've not had the map for the whole um, journey because you've been, you've been using dead reckoning. It was used a lot, I believe, during the Second World War by the Long Range Desert Group, the precursor to the, the Special Air Service for navigating in those open, hostile, barren terrains. Dead reckoning was used a great deal. What else is going on in the chat? Well, I'm glad you got back to us, Lewis. Dave's saying he was never spot on. Spot on's a state of mind. It's, if it's in the right good if it's in the right grid square. Boris was my instructor on my map. Who, who was yours, Dave? Boris, I think they built the school around him. He'd been there forever. All way up. Jim's waiting. Uh, Biscuits and Ammo's waiting with a link. It's a link to what looks like a NATO stock number. Oh, that's interesting. They teach dead reckoning basics on the land nav SME course. They didn't used to. So that's... Um, is that up? I'm pretty sure they didn't. I'm, I'm positive they didn't. All they really taught was the uh, the common military syllabus recruits. In other words, what people need for to teach basic recruits. Um, Frankie Green, not a name that's familiar to me, Dave, but uh, but thank you. Okay, one or two things that are left. Next thing is the phone. I've I've alluded to this already. Um, insofar that you can use it as a sat nav, you can use it mapping software. There's a calculator on your phone, not most phones, there's a calculator. If you're not particularly skilled at maths like me and you're doing some complex calculations, there's a calculator on there. So whilst I like to write it down and sort of work it out that way, there's also a calculator on your phone. There's lots of things on this phone that could be useful to you in your navigation other than the obvious stuff like mapping software or a compass or or a GPS or a sat nav or Google Maps or something like that. There's a lot of stuff on this phone that could be useful to you. And the final thing which is, is, a, is, a, is a component part of the phone. Oh, wait up. Either I'm drunk or it's gone out of focus. Possibly it's both. The other thing as well is a camera. Now this is a is it you know this is a, a purpose camera this is not a phone that's got a camera on it that is my new camera because i'm trying to improve my video quality when i go out but that is a camera clearly most modern phones now have a camera on them as well can anybody pop into the chat and let me know what they think the benefit of having a camera with them a digital camera with them when they're navigating, what an advantage might be. How might you use that? Other than taking pretty pictures to show people from a navigation perspective, how might you use a camera to aid you? Let's have a look in the chat, see what people think. Oh, Dave, when he did it in October. Oh, see what you mean, Dave. See what you mean. Yeah, I'm sure Boris is... I'm sure... Maybe I, when, I, when I did my map rig, it, it looked like Boris should have been long gone years ago. So maybe he's still hanging around. Be nice to, be nice to think he is. And Velma said, do you think the military navigation is occasionally robotically counting steps and angles? Um, yeah. 
You've used the word occasionally there, which was which is why I've I've gone with the answer. Yes, I, I think it is because counting steps and angles is is like a it's like a foundation block of navigating. It, it just is. It just is. So yeah, I do think occasionally military navigation is counting blocks, uh, counting steps, taking angles, and, and starting and stopping your stopwatch. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's it's the building blocks of good navigation skills. Anthony saying battery for fire starting various components to build a rudimentary radio depending on the on the cam the camera load custom firmware with various utilities yeah I'm, I'm sure all of those it, it was something more well I say more obvious it's obvious if you know the answer it's, it's obvious to me because I've got the answer in my head but yeah all of those possibly shoot towards some so you don't have to look into it Ah, Dave, you've been a fan of some of my other videos, as it has looked, as, as but, but Biscuits 9mm beat you to it further up in the chat. Take a picture of where you came from, Tony Dublin. Yes, they're called um, back snaps. And it's, it's this notion of, and you're quite right, Dave, I've done a video about this. As human beings, when we are walking along, forget navigating, forget, you know, forget maps and compasses. When you're walking along... You tend to be looking forwards. You tend to be looking perhaps out to the side, but you tend to be looking forwards. We don't walk along looking behind us. We just don't. We know what's behind us because we've passed it, but we've passed it from the perspective of looking at it from, from that direction there. If I walk past a van, I see the part of the van that is facing me. When I've got to it and passed it, I don't see the other side of the van because I'm not looking back. If you take that concept and apply it to navigation, when we are navigating, we are used to seeing things, features, checkpoints, whatever you want to call them, the ground from the angle that we're looking at it at. And that makes sense because our eyes are in the front of our head, not the sides, not the back or anything like that. That's fine until you need to retrace your steps. When you need to retrace your steps, although you've covered that ground, or probably covered that ground, it will look different. It will look different because you're looking at it through a perspective that you've not seen it before. I'm sure all of us, me included, have retraced our steps. And as they're retracing their steps thinking, this isn't the route, this isn't the route I came down, I didn't come down here, it didn't look anything like that, oh, oh I'm here, that, that was the route, it's that 180 degree inversion can really, really throw us. What a camera can do, I'm not seeing you, you walk along with it over your shoulder doing flash bursts every few seconds, but whenever get, you get to a point where you've perhaps stopped to check your map, check a bearing, check, just turn around, take a photograph, take a snap of what that looked behind you. Clearly, if you're taking them in a certain order, when you turn around to backtrack on your steps, the most recent photograph will be closest to you. The oldest photograph will be furthest away from you because they tend to place the photographs in a chronological order. So using a camera, whether it's a, a proper camera, what the hell that is, or a camera on your phone, which is still a proper camera, is a useful way of being able to keep a record of what things look like from a 180 degree perspective. So well done to everybody that's that spotted that and thank you Dave for, um, for also flagging up that it was a previous uh, video that I've done as well. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Jim remembers trees, tracks, horse poo, etc. All good markers. Does, does horse poo look different from one direction to the other? I don't know. Always looks the same when I stand in the damn stuff. Cheers, Anthony. You head off. Anthony's not a bad dad when he says he's picking up his little ones. He's not left them till five to nine at night. He's uh, he's based in the US, so I don't imagine it's coming up to sort of late e or early evening, time late afternoon, early evening. You take care, Anthony. Thanks for joining us. So folks, that is my navigation kit. 
Some of it I carry all the time. Some of it I carry now and then. Some of it I never carry and I leave at home. Some of it is dead obvious. Some of it is not so obvious. Let me know in the chat two things if you don't mind. Two things in the chat. Firstly, is there anything that you carry that doesn't fit into this kind of category? I'm not saying about, well, I carry a different compass or I carry a different GPS. Is there anything that you carry that is just not, doesn't fall even similar to anything that I've mentioned here? What is it? Let me know in the chat. Be interesting to hear. Secondly, is there anything there that sort of made you think, that's quite neat, I'd never thought of that, or that's a good idea, or I'll try and get hold of one of those, or I'd never thought of doing that, I'm going to try that the next time I go out. What do you carry that's not here? What might you start doing in the future as a result of this live stream? Be good to know. Oh, Dave, 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 Dave. Thank you for mentioning pay speeds. There's my day sack on the floor down there. I didn't take them off, but you're quite right, Dave. I didn't mention pay speeds. Thank you for flagging it. There are the pay speeds on uh, the day sack on the corner, on the shoulder strap of one of my day sacks there. Thank you. Yes, so pay speeds. I dug out the garage for this very purpose and then ignored it. Biscuits now millimeter. It's held your comment for moderation. I'm assuming because you used the word tit, <laughs> but I've now approved it. Biscuits nine mil likes the tip because I have to teach nav to ACF cadets. Yes, if you're teaching nav, it's a bloody great piece of kit. I don't teach nav anymore, but I did take some friends out about a year ago on the South Downs, which is a, which is an area close to myself, and we used it, and it was a great example. It wasn't far away. It was down a valley and up the other side of a re-entry I just wanted to point them to me to um, a, a wood line slash a wood line slash fence junction and they use that to be able to do that and it works very well so yeah anybody that you're teaching navigation to it's useful to carry and you know what even if you're out on the ground and you're you're just with a you're with a walking partner it's not a bad thing to carry because you might spot something oh, look at that goat there look at the goat halfway up and you know what it's like trying to see a mountain goat on the side of an escarpment. It's almost impossible. With something like that, you can you can bring them onto it and they can share what you've seen and vice versa. So I'm glad you like that idea, Biscuits 9mm. Uh, EW Yogis likes the camera idea. Yeah, it's devilishly simple. And you know what? Despite us often going out to get away from screens and things, I'd like to think we all still carry a phone if for no other purpose than for safety reasons. And of course, taking photographs to be able to retrace your route if you need to. I would put into the, the fair, fair use category out on the hills of your phone. So that's everything that I wanted to cover, folks. That's my, um, unless Dave weighs in with something else that I've forgotten about, like the pacing beads that were down there, that's pretty much the nav kit that I carry. There's one final thing I want to mention, and it's possibly the most important thing relating to this kit here. Moska Hansky, I think, was coined a phrase, the more you know, the less you carry. From a bushcraft perspective, if you know how to make cordage, you don't have to carry it. If you know how to make containers, you don't have to carry them. That sort of ethos. Um, I'm not sure that ethos translates fully through to navigation. Just because I know how to carry a map and use a compass, great. But you try going out with just that knowledge and no map or no compass, it, it doesn't quite work the same. Now natural navigation that that's that aspect of navigation where you can perhaps start to use or carry less stuff but if we're talking about conventional navigation i think the single biggest thing to carry using the word loosely is the knowledge of how to use this kit all the gear no idea is a phrase that can be applied to many things and very definitely applied to navigation. It's all well and good having a great map and a sat nav and this and that and a compass. And again. If you don't know how to use them, you are not doing yourself, the people in your party or the people that might need to come out to help you any favours whatsoever. So whilst it's nice to have a collection of kit and pour over it and, and, and you get excited about using it, please, 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 at the beginning of that list, put some form of 
of of training slash instruction that could be formal by going on a course it could be informal by by just picking it up and, and running with it safely but whatever it is let's not put kit over competence to use the kit that's my final parting shot it doesn't fit in my navigation kit it doesn't go in a box i can never leave it at home it's always up there regardless of what kit i'm carrying so on that note folks i'm going to let you see if you've got any um any questions coming in give it a minute or two for any questions to come in happy to answer them if you've asked a question and i've not answered it apologies throw it back in the chat now because you've got my attention and then we'll sort of wrap this up it's almost probably about an hour almost an hour on the dot No questions coming in. You've either all buggered off, all fallen asleep, I've done such a fantastic job, nobody's got any questions, or I've drank so much of this 8.2 that I can't focus properly on the screen. Biscuits 9 mil, don't you're very welcome, don't worry about it. Um if you I don't think you've joined any of the previous live streams, but if you go back through my channel and look at last Friday, the Friday before, the Friday before that. Then I've done um, three previous live streams as well in pretty much the same format. Dave's asking what's on next week. Because he's got a dining out. So that immediately tells me that you're in one of the messes, Dave. See? Piecing these little pieces of information together. Um, so what's on next week? Next week we are going to look at... Crikey, I said this less than an hour ago. Next week we're looking at... Oh yes, I remember map checks there are certain things on maps that are critical to you understanding and having a clear idea of but they are liable to change from map to map to map so i've got some critical map checks to share with you next week and also i want to break down any misunderstanding about map scales there is a natural confusion around map scales because they mean in terms of detail exactly the opposite of what the scale might suggest so back to maps next week map checks map scales let's break down some of those barriers okay folks well i'm going to end the stream now if you've got any questions i'm going to miss them i'm afraid but look at the live recording when it's posted tomorrow morning or maybe later this evening tomorrow morning if you've got a question that i haven't answered here drop it into the normal youtube chat below the video and i'll get back to it no worries dave thanks for joining in you're very welcome andrew take care folks whatever you're up to this weekend whether you're working taking some time off enjoying whatever Keep yourself safe and I look forward to seeing you next week. If you're not yet a subscriber, why don't you head on over to the channel, do me a favour and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you in about a week's time. Take care guys.